Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today, we'll explore a culinary delight from Japan. The chef flips the fish and continues cutting until a full circle is completed and the fish is divided into two parts. With meticulousness and technique, organs such as the intestines This process demands high concentration and skill to ensure that all bones, including the smallest ones, are completely removed. This ensures that each fillet remains boneless, enhancing aesthetic appeal and ease of use for cooking and serving. After filleting the opa fish, the chef proceeds to cut the meat from the head portion of the fish. First, the chef cuts the abductor muscle, which is the meat near the fish's head, close to the jaw. ...as on a plate, creating a colourful and flavourful masterpiece. Each piece of fish is evenly cooked, bringing a unique and delicious flavour to diners. The combination of fresh flavours and exquisite cooking techniques of Japanese cuisine makes up an essential part of this unique culinary experience. In Japanese culinary culture, seafood preparation is an art passed down from generation to generation. Amidst the vast oceans, giant octopus has become one of the prized ingredients used by skilled chefs to create unique and enticing dishes. In this video, let's explore the process of preparing giant octopus in Japanese cuisine. Do you enjoy sashimi? Sashimi made from giant octopus is a delicate and unique dish in Japanese cuisine, showcasing the skill and finesse of chefs. Giant octopus is carefully selected from clean sea sources, then cleaned and meticulously prepared to preserve its freshness and natural flavour. Each slice of sashimi is thinly and evenly cut, creating beautiful translucent pieces of white and pink meat. When tasted, you'll experience the characteristic crispness and chewiness of octopus, combined with the natural sweetness of the meat. Served with soy sauce, wasabi, and pickled ginger, giant octopus sashimi offers a perfect balance of salty, spicy, sweet, and sour flavors. Each piece of sashimi is not only a delicious dish, but also a work of art, reflecting the meticulousness and talent of Japanese chefs. It truly is a unique culinary experience, bringing diners closer to the culture and culinary essence of the land of the rising sun. Sashimi is a traditional Japanese dish where seafood is often served raw, thinly sliced. Therefore, giant octopus sashimi is usually made from fresh octopus without any heat processing to preserve its natural flavour and freshness. However, there is one exception in Japanese culinary culture, which is tako sashimi. To make tako sashimi, first, 
Japanese chefs carefully select giant octopus from reliable sources, ensuring quality and especially large size suitable for this dish. The octopus is then thoroughly cleaned under cold running water to remove sand and impurities. Next, it will be boiled in a pot of boiling water with a little vinegar and sake. This process helps remove any fishy odor and creates a crisp texture for the octopus meat. The boiling time is only a few minutes, ensuring that the octopus is evenly cooked while still retaining its elasticity. Then, it will be cut into thin, even slices by skilled chefs. Their cutting technique not only creates thin slices of meat, but also maintains the uniqueness and characteristics of each meat section. Finally, each piece of octopus will be carefully arranged on a plate accompanied by fresh raw vegetables such as wild grass, bean sprouts and cherry tomatoes. In particular, some chefs also decorate the taco sashimi plate with special sauces or sesame seeds to create highlights and enhance unique flavours. The next dish worth mentioning is octopus simmered with taro, which is a warm and flavorful dish in Japanese cuisine. The preparation process for this dish usually starts with cleaning and cutting small octopus. Then, the small taro roots will be thoroughly washed and peeled, requiring careful handling because they are too small and slippery. Next, a pot of boiling water. Small octopus pieces will be added along with taro and spices such as soy sauce, green onions and edamame beans. The dish will be simmered gently for the necessary time for the ingredients to absorb the flavour from the broth and spices, creating a rich and enticing flavour. When the broth is reduced and the ingredients are tender, the octopus and taro stew will be served on a plate and enjoyed while still hot. You think that's all? Don't worry, under the skilled hands of Japanese chefs, there are many, many more delicious dishes made from giant octopus that I want to introduce to you. After being peeled, giant octopus will be cut using the kobanzukuri technique, with delicate crosscuts that aren't cut through. Then, the octopus will be dredged in a thin layer of dry flour creating a light, crispy coating on the outside. Next, it will be pan-fried until both sides are golden brown, emitting a tantalizing aroma. Then, the stems of shiitake mushrooms will be trimmed, leaving only the tops, which are then sliced into smaller pieces to retain their crunchiness and natural sweetness. The shiitake mushrooms will be stir-fried with fresh nanohana greens, creating a rich and flavorful dish. Once the mushrooms and greens are cooked, they will be arranged on a plate alongside the pan-fried octopus, creating a dish that is both visually appealing and delicious in taste. This dish is not only mouth-watering, but also a masterpiece, 
showcasing the elegance and skill of Japanese chefs. There's a fascinating tradition associated with consuming giant octopus meat on special occasions. According to tradition, on September 9th, Choyo Day in the Japanese calendar, the Japanese often eat a dish called takoyaki, fried egg balls with a piece of octopus inside. This day is known as Octopus Day and is seen as an opportunity to enjoy the unique flavour of this seafood. Furthermore, Giant Octopus holds a special place in Japanese folklore. A common legend tells of an ocean deity named Takotsubo, with the octopus being regarded as his image. This deity is often revered by fishermen and coastal dwellers, believed to protect the oceans and bring luck to fishermen when they venture out to sea. All of these factors contribute to giant octopus meat being not only a part of Japanese cuisine, but also a part of its culture and traditions, creating a special allure for diners everywhere. We'll embark on a colourful and exciting culinary journey with a special type of fish, the dragon sturgeon. Have you ever wondered how a Japanese chef professionally and deliciously cooks a dragon sturgeon? In this video, we'll explore how to cut, clean and cook dragon sturgeon meticulously and in detail using techniques inspired by Japanese culinary traditions. At the same time, we'll also learn about characteristic dishes made from this fish to inspire your family meals or weekend gatherings. Dragon sturgeon not only provides delicious and nutritious meat, but also brings unique and flavorful culinary experiences. And now, let's begin this journey to discover its new taste. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to not miss out on the next exciting food videos from our channel. Are you eager to create a delicious and nutritious dish from dragon sturgeon? But how do you choose the freshest fish? Let's discover the secret to selecting the freshest dragon sturgeon in this video. Firstly, observe the appearance of the fish. Choose ones with shiny scales and no signs of any damage on the body. Next, check the fish's eyes. Fresh fish have bright and clear eyes. Avoid fish with dull or cloudy eyes, as they may not be fresh. Pay attention to the smell of the fish. Fresh fish won't have a strong fishy smell, but rather a subtle and pleasant seafood scent. Lastly, choose fish with firm and elastic meat without any signs of discoloration. Good quality fish meat will have a deep pink color and bounce back when pressed lightly. By smart and meticulous selection, you'll get the best ingredients to create delicious dishes from dragon sturgeon. Imagine standing in front of a large dragon sturgeon. How would a Japanese chef cut it to prepare for a delicious meal? The first step is to remove the dragon sturgeon fish's scales.
Place the dragon sturgeon on a flat surface, holding the fish's head firmly with your non-dominant hand. Starting from the tail, use the knife to scrape the scales in the opposite direction towards the head, applying moderate pressure to avoid tearing the fish's skin. This process should be done slowly and carefully to ensure all scales are completely removed. Pay special attention to difficult areas like near the fins and the belly. After all the scales are removed, rinse the fish under running water to wash away any... The next step in preparing the dragon sturgeon involves removing its head and internal organs. Using a sharp, sturdy knife, make a firm cut just behind the gills to sever the head. Gently open the belly cavity and carefully pull out the internal organs, discarding them appropriately. Using a sharp fillet knife, start at the head end and make a cut along the backbone, following the natural curve of the fish. Work the knife slowly and carefully, keeping it as close to the bones as possible to maximize the amount of meat obtained. Gently separate the flesh from the bones, working your way down to the tail. Once the first fillet is removed, Flip the fish over and repeat the process on the other side. After both fillets are separated, inspect them for any remaining small bones and remove them with tweezers. Trim away any excess fat or skin if desired. The result is two clean, boneless dragon sturgeon fillets ready to be cooked into your desired dish. Let's explore how to vary dishes made from dragon sturgeon to create new and unique culinary experiences inspired by Japanese cuisine. Dragon sturgeon not only provides diverse cooking ingredients, but also highlights attractive and unique meals. Do you know why dragon sturgeon meat is highly regarded? Not only for its delicious taste, but also because of its high nutritional content. Dragon sturgeon is a high quality protein source, helping to build and maintain muscle, an essential part of a healthy diet and overall health. Additionally, dragon sturgeon is a source of omega-3 fatty acids supporting heart and brain health, while reducing the risk of cardiovascular diseases and high blood pressure. Dragon sturgeon also provides vitamin D, aiding in calcium and mineral absorption, promoting bone and teeth health. Moreover, Dragon sturgeon contains various minerals such as selenium, iodine, and zinc, balancing body functions and supporting the immune system. These nutritional benefits make dragon sturgeon an excellent choice to supplement your daily diet. We're going to explore a unique and enticing dish from Japanese cuisine, monkfish, also known as anku in Japan.
Monkfish is a species of fish found at the bottom of the sea, renowned for its somewhat bizarre appearance, but possessing delicious, firm, and sweet flesh. Especially, the liver of this fish, called ankimo, is considered a delicacy and often likened to foie gras. For the Japanese people, monkfish is not just a culinary ingredient, but also an important part of their traditional culinary culture. Monkfish often appears in hot pot dishes called nabemono during the winter, bringing warmth and nutrition to family meals. The popularity of this fish lies not only in its taste, but also in its high nutritional value, including protein, vitamins, and minerals. Now, we'll follow the process of preparing monkfish by a skilled Japanese chef, especially the step of skinning the fish, an important step in preparing a dish from this unique fish. First, the chef will lay the fish flat on a large cutting board and use a sharp knife. With delicate technique, the chef will cut a small line around the fish's head, being careful not to cut too deep to avoid damaging the flesh. After creating a cut line around the head, the chef will start slowly skinning the fish. The chef will use one hand to firmly hold the fish's body and the other hand to grasp the skin at the cut line, beginning to pull slowly. During the skinning process, if encountering difficulty, the chef will skillfully use the knife to gently separate between the skin and the flesh, making this process smoother. In addition to the conventional method of skinning monkfish, in some restaurants, chefs will hang monkfish on a sturdy metal hook. The monkfish will be hooked into the mouth so that the fish is hung upright, providing a convenient condition for the operation. The chef will start the skinning process by using a sharp knife to cut a line around the fish's head creating a clear boundary between the skin and the flesh. Then, the chef will firmly grasp the cut skin and slowly pull it down. Thanks to gravity, the fish skin gradually separates from the flesh, making the skinning process smooth. Monkfish skin is usually not eaten due to its thickness and toughness. However, it can be utilized to make broth adding rich flavour to hot pot or soup dishes. Especially, the Japanese may use fish skin to add to Anku Nabe hot pot, enhancing the sweetness and richness of the broth. In some cosmetics and nutritional supplements, collagen from fish skin is extracted and used to help improve skin elasticity and health. Next, the chef will place the fish on a cutting board and use a sharp knife to cut off the mouth. The monkfish's mouth is quite large and powerful, with a set of sharp jaws and teeth designed to capture and hold prey. The chef will carefully cut off this part to ensure there is no remaining part that will hinder the next processing steps. With the perfectly prepared monkfish flesh, we are ready to move on to the next cooking steps, creating unique dishes with a Japanese flavor. The Japanese chef will carefully select pieces of meat from the back of the monkfish, 
where there is plenty of sweet and moderately firm flesh. Using an extremely sharp knife, they will slice the meat thinly and evenly, creating slices of sashimi with just the right thickness to ensure the natural flavor and sweetness of the monkfish are experienced. Once the meat from the back is prepared, it's time for the liver. Next, they will slice the liver into thin slices, similar to preparing the meat, ensuring the freshness and natural sweetness of the liver. When both ingredients are ready, the chef will arrange them on a plate with delicacy and finesse. This arrangement is not only to create a visually appealing dish, but also to enhance the taste and appeal of the dish. Finally, a touch of light seasoning such as sea salt, ponzu sauce or grated radish may be added to enhance the natural flavour of the monkfish and its liver creating a harmonious taste experience. Japanese chefs always emphasize the delicacy and respect for ingredients, turning each meal into a great culinary masterpiece. Today, we're going to explore a pinnacle of Japanese cuisine the art of slicing bluefin tuna by the masters of sashimi. Bluefin tuna is not only a rare delicacy, but also a symbol of sophistication and finesse in Japanese cuisine. Join us as we witness the intricate techniques and learn about the process of preparing this fish to see the dedication and meticulousness of Japanese chefs. First and foremost, we need a fresh and high-quality bluefin tuna. We'll dive into a dramatic and captivating event, the auction of bluefin tuna at the Toyosu market in Japan. This is not just an ordinary market session, but a gathering of top chefs and discerning buyers from around the world, all seeking the finest bluefin tuna. The auction begins in the early morning, when the air is still quiet, but inside the market, excitement and tension are already in the air. Bluefin tuna are carefully displayed, each meticulously inspected for colour, texture and the shine of its skin. Buyers use flashlights to scrutinize every piece of meat, evaluating quality and determining the price they're willing to pay. As the bell signals the start of the auction, the atmosphere erupts. Price boards are raised and numbers change rapidly in the blink of an eye. Fierce competition ensues, with buyers vying to offer the highest price for the best bluefin tuna. Buyers are not only renowned chefs, but also major seafood suppliers, all sharing a common goal, to acquire the best bluefin tuna. The bidding calls grow louder, creating a lively and thrilling atmosphere. When the final price is set, the winner not only takes home a bluefin tuna, but also carries pride and an opportunity to showcase their culinary talent.
After experiencing the vibrant auction, we'll delve into the process of preparing the tools for slicing bluefin tuna, especially the specialized knife, the tuna knife. The tuna knife is not just a tool, but also an artistic masterpiece crafted by master blacksmiths. The process of making a tuna knife begins with selecting the finest materials. Master blacksmiths choose high quality steel sheets then heat them in a furnace to the exact temperature required. Once the steel reaches the necessary temperature, the blacksmiths commence the forging process. With precise and powerful hammer strikes, they shape the knife blade, ensuring every detail is perfect. This stage demands patience and high skill because even a small mistake can ruin the entire knife. After shaping the blade, the blacksmiths proceed to sharpen the knife. The blade is sharpened to maximum sharpness, allowing it to effortlessly slice through thick tuna meat. The knife sharpening process also requires finesse and precision, as the tuna knife needs to be razor sharp, yet highly durable. Finally, the blacksmiths attach the handle to the knife blade. The knife handle is usually made from precious wood, both sturdy and providing a comfortable grip. Every tuna knife is thoroughly inspected before leaving the workshop, ensuring it meets the highest standards of quality and sharpness. Now that we've got the razor sharp and perfect tuna knife in hand, let's explore the process of slicing bluefin tuna by Japanese master chefs. They begin by carefully removing the head and tail of the fish. The chef will make a sharp cut just before the tail fin, creating a clean and decisive cut. The tail of the bluefin tuna usually has less meat and more sinew, but it's still utilized for dishes like stew or deep fried delicacies. Next, the chef moves on to cutting the head of the fish. They use the tuna knife to make a precise cut just behind the fish gills, slicing deep into the meat to separate the head from the body. Once the head is detached, they proceed to open it up to extract the rare and valuable meat inside. This part is often referred to as cheek meat and torokama, collar. Cheek meat has a delicate texture and unique flavor, considered one of the best parts of the tuna. With the head and tail successfully removed and processed, the chefs move on to slicing the other major parts of the fish. This includes dividing the tuna body into three main sections, the upper back, lower back, and belly, each with its own characteristics and flavors. Each cut is performed with absolute precision every knife stroke delicately embellishing the tuna body gently but firmly.
the chef knows how to use strength and technique to separate the upper back from the lower back perfectly, without damaging or compromising the freshness and quality of the tuna meat. After dividing the tuna body into two main sections, the chef proceeds to handle the belly part of the fish. Using smooth cutting lines and adjusting the light, they remove any excess skin, sinew or dirt on the surface of the belly meat. With the tuna body successfully divided into three main sections, Japanese chefs continue with the process of finely preparing each meat portion, creating exquisite culinary dishes. Using precise knives, talented chefs proceed to cut each piece of meat finely and evenly. For the lower loin of the bluefin tuna, skilled chefs continue their finesse and delicacy in preparation. Thin and tender slices are cut from this portion, emphasizing the natural beauty and distinctive flavor of the bluefin tuna. Chefs may choose to use the lower loin for frying, grilling, or steaming. The versatility in preparation allows them to create a diverse range of dishes with unique and rich flavors from crispy fried fish to delicate grilled delicacies. As for the belly portion of the bluefin tuna, with its natural sweetness and rich fat content, it becomes the highlight of every meal. Chefs transform each slice of this portion into precious gems on the dining table. Halibut fish is a large marine fish belonging to the family Pleuronectidae, distributed mainly in cold water areas of the Northern Hemisphere, including the North Atlantic Ocean and the Bering Sea. They are fish with a distinctive shape, with a flat body and eyes on one side, usually brown or grey to match the seafloor environment. Halibut fish is a very popular fish in cuisine with delicious meat, rich in protein and low in fat. Their meat is sweet, tender and can be processed into many delicious but simple dishes that still retain the natural flavor of the fish. This has made halibut fishing a significant industry in the marine fish industry. However, due to strong fishing pressure, halibut management and conservation is an important issue for fish management agencies and fishermen. Fishing for halibut at sea is often a demanding and challenging experience. Fishermen often use sturdy fishing rods and heavy-duty fishing lines, combined with bottom fishing machines to drop the lines to the seabed. Natural bait such as fish, shrimp or scallops are often used, which are tightly attached to the line and dropped to the seabed, attracting the attention of the halibut.
Once the line has been dropped, the angler needs to be patient and wait, because halibut usually does not attack the bait silently, but will usually eat the bait and leave the location. When a vibration is felt from the line, the angler needs skill to carefully manage the retrieve, especially when faced with large halibut from great depths. Organs. Carefully turn the fish over and continue cutting to remove the head of the halibut. Next, use cold water to rinse the inside of the fish's belly, completely removing any remaining dirt. Skin to remove it from the fish's flesh. This creates many creative opportunities for chefs and brings diverse culinary experiences to diners. We will explore an intriguing and refined aspect of Japanese cuisine the art of cutting and preparing mahi-mahi fish. This type of fish is known for its excellent taste and high nutritional value, playing an important role in many traditional dishes. In this video, we will follow skilled chefs in Japan, from selecting fresh fish at the market to the most exquisite cutting and preparation techniques. Let's experience and learn how Japanese cuisine honors mahi-mahi fish through each artistic step. Mahi-mahi, also known as dolphin fish, is a tropical sea fish famous for its delicious taste and vibrant colors. Its body is a mix of blue and yellow, creating a visually stunning appearance. The white, firm flesh of mahi-mahi, with its sweet taste, makes it an ideal ingredient in many dishes, from sashimi and sushi to grilled and pan-seared dishes. In Japanese cuisine, mahi-mahi is popular due to its excellent compatibility with various spices and diverse cooking styles, offering not only delicious but also visually appealing dishes. To catch mahi-mahi fish requires skill and high technique because they inhabit offshore and often swiftly moving waters. There are several common methods for catching mahi-mahi, including netting, trolling and handline fishing. Trolling is a popular method used by both professional and amateur fishermen. Fishermen use fishing rods with artificial or live bait to attract fish. This technique requires patience and skill as anglers adjust the trolling speed to create an enticing movement for mahi-mahi. Handline fishing is a traditional method used by many local fishermen. With this technique, fishermen use a long fishing line with bait at the end and lower it into the water where mahi-mahi appears. When a fish bites, 
the fisherman will hand pull the line, requiring dexterity and strength. After a long journey at sea, when the mahi-mahi fishing boats return to shore, fishermen bring not only the excitement of a successful journey, but also fresh and hopeful mahi-mahi fish. These fish will not only be a source of livelihood, but also a source of pride, brought to local seafood markets with the hope of creating special meals for every family. In Japanese culinary culture, choose, they start the process by removing scales from the surface of the mahi-mahi fish. Then, chefs use a sharp knife to easily separate the head of the fish and remove the internal organs. Next, Japanese chefs proceed to fillet the fish carefully and meticulously. They use a sharp knife to cut from the head of the fish and move towards the tail with precision and dexterity. They separate the fish. When the fish pieces are half cooked and have a crispy crust, chefs add a little diluted soy sauce to the pan and wait until the soy sauce thickens and permeates into the fish pieces. This creates a rich color and flavor for each Finally, the finished fish pieces will be beautifully presented on a plate, ready to be enjoyed. Each piece of fish will carry a unique flavor from the seasoning. With low fat content and rich omega-3 fatty acids, mahi-mahi fish meat not only Especially, mahi-mahi fish meat is very we genuinely appreciate your support and enthusiasm for Emerson Newman Channel. Your continued viewership means the world to us, and we are committed to providing valuable content that enriches your knowledge and endeavors. Thank you wholeheartedly for being a part of our community.